Thank you, thank you so much, Leader Pelosi, uh, and thanks to GLAAD for honoring me with the Rick Weiland Award. Rick was a true pioneer. We owe a lot to him and to his surviving partner, Mike Schaefer. Rick not only opened doors for outleaders in tech, but he also brought the digital world to the LGBTQ advocacy movement. So I'd like to start off by saying that there's no way I'd be able to do what I do and be openly gay without the hard work and the sacrifice of the people who fought for gay rights way before I was ever born. When I was a teenager, I was dismayed. I couldn't identify any openly gay business leaders. And I remember thinking, when I was 14 or 15, that if this was what I wanted to do, I would have to find a way to be straight. And once in a while, it still feels like an, an open act of defiance to be doing this. It's really bad when other people tell you you can't do something because of who you are. It's even worse when you believe it yourself. When I was born, 32 years ago, homosexuality was still listed in the DSM as a disorder. Uh, gender identity disorder was in there in recent, as recently as 2013. In 2004, only 13 years ago, President George W. Bush called for a constitutional amendment banning gay marriage. Two years ago, in a Supreme Court decision, gay marriage became legalized nationwide. So this was only 13 years. Popular support for marriage equality went from 31% in 2004 to 62% in 2017. This is a remarkable change. There's still plenty of injustice in the world, but in such a tough year as this one's been, when we spend so much time reading the bad news and the steps we're taking backwards, I think it's easy to lose sight of how much and how quickly things have gotten better. All LGBTQ people, in fact, all people who care about justice, owe a deep debt of gratitude to those who have made it happen. We get to live our lives because of them. This has been a hard-fought struggle, uh, we've made up a lot of ground, and it's amazing how quickly things have gotten better. So I'm very thankful to everyone who's made that happen. The second thing I feel a deep debt of gratitude towards is the internet. The internet is an amazing thing in a lot of ways, uh, but particularly in how much it makes it possible to make change happen, and how much it makes it possible to connect with other people. I don't think that would have happened. I don't think a shift could have happened that quickly in popular opinion before the internet came along. When I was growing up, I didn't really know any other gay kids in real life for a long time. But I found a community in the early days of the internet. The internet makes it possible for us to see the lives of other people and for us to see other people's lives. The internet is open. It means other people can't tell us what we can talk about and we can't talk about. It really wasn't that long ago at all that being gay was wrong think, and there was nowhere at all that it was safe to talk about being gay as a teenager. In fact, it was even dangerous to say something supportive of other people being gay. And I'm 100% sure that part of the reason that gay people are more accepted now is because of the internet. Not only did other gay people find their community, but straight people found out that they knew some gay people too, and that they weren't so bad. So this makes me particularly sensitive to losing the right to free expression on the internet. Obviously, I don't think free speech is absolute, but I'm worried by how much it seems at risk in the climate today. This is part of the reason we need to keep fighting for net neutrality. We need our government to reinterpret freedom of expression in the age of the internet. I'm uncomfortable with a small number of tech companies being the ones who decide what we're allowed to say and not to say. And I think that it's, uh, it's minority groups, most of all, that depend on this freedom of expression, the ability to talk about their lives, the ability to connect with other people, and we can't lose this right. But there's another side of this, right? So the hard part of this is that there's a balance. The other thing that we need to balance with freedom of expression on the internet is figuring out how to make the internet a nicer place. I got bullied a little bit for being gay when I was growing up and it's made me particularly sensitive ever since to seeing anyone else get bullied for anything, persecuted, even if they're people I don't like and I don't agree with. I hate seeing anyone on the other side of a mob. I hate watching the internet turn against people. I've seen it turn against me, I've seen it turn against friends, and I've seen it turn against uh, basically every minority group at some time or other. Uh, and if we don't stand up for all of them, it's, it's really easy for that to go the other way. Humans seem to have some built-in instincts to restrain this tendency when we're face-to-face -face with someone, but something, whatever causes that, doesn't seem to translate to the internet. 
The only physical reminder I have of getting bullied as a kid is a tiny scar. It's almost entirely faded. The mental issues probably honestly never totally go away. I've got little sympathy for the argument that only physical threats matter. I think tech companies owe us much better anti-bullying tools, or any at all in some cases. If you haven't watched If you haven't watched Monica Lewinsky's TED Talk about cyberbullying, you should. I understand that this problem is not as easy as people like to claim it is, and certainly some companies do it a lot better than others. But it's critical that we figure this out. I don't think the internet is an optional thing anymore. Everyone's got to be on it. Um, it does have great things about it, um, but it's often not a very friendly place. And I think we can solve this uh, without threatening freedom of expression. I think we have to figure out how we can make people what we can do to make people want to be nicer to each other online. It's always amazing to me to watch people who probably agree on 98% of topics spend their days ripping each other apart on Twitter. I don't actually think that makes the world a lot better. After every major societal shift, we have to figure out how to adjust. Certainly, the internet has been a monumental societal shift. There have been great parts of it. There have been terrible parts of it. I think it's been unbelievably important for the LGBT community. And in fact, I think it's been important uh, for many communities that have found new acceptance in the last 10 or 20 years. I'm confident that the major internet platforms will do the right thing. I'm confident that we can balance these two challenges, the need to preserve freedom of expression and the need to give people tools to prevent cyberbullying. In spite of everything going on and growing wrong in the world, and this year it's certainly been a lot, um, I'm happy to be alive right now. I'm incredibly thankful for the progress we've made, uh, and I'm very aware of how far we have to go. Uh, thank you very much.